All right, everyone, we're gonna be doing the patch 6.17 rundown. This is the pre-Worlds patch. I believe that Worlds will be on patch 6.18. Um, so there is still going to be stuff that, you know, uh, a lot of changes are going to probably be coming. Um, and this is just going to be the uh, the first wave, I guess. So anyways, let's get uh, right into it. Number one is Annie. Tibbers and Rage wears off faster after Annie dies. So this probably only affects people that are following my tier list, let's be honest. Um, Tibber's bonus movements uh, and attack speed after Annie's death decays 20% faster. That doesn't really matter. I mean, if you're dying, then you're doing something wrong anyway. You know what I'm saying? Alright, unless you're Karthus. Anyways, Ash. Q duration down. R damage down. Oof. Uh, so, Ranger's focus from 5 seconds to 4 seconds. I don't think that's the worst, but it definitely will impact her. Enchanted Crystal Arrow damage uh, from 250 to 600 scaling uh, to 200-400 uh, which is only 25 at rank, uh, at rank 2, which after you factor in magic resistance is probably like 15 damage missing or something. So that one's not so big. Um, and then 600 at tier 3. So, uh, these nerfs are perfectly fine and acceptable. Uh, the only thing is that, uh, the Q Rangers focus, that, that'll actually impact her Runon's Hurricane, I guess, but... Uh, beyond that, not so much. I think the ch the nerf to Enchanted Crystal Arrow is basically negligible. Um, I think that fine-tuning the first one to not be as impactful as we traditionally know it to be is something that is pretty acceptable, and I think it's it's ultimately a fair balance choice, so I think that's good. Quirky. Attacking wards no longer cancels the package's speed boost. So this is nice. Uh, passive. Hextech uh, munition. Okay, so attacking wards no longer. That's nice. It's not going to make Quirky come into the meta, though. Um, not by any means, unless there is a, a huge hit to other ADCs. Even then, um, there's other AD carries that are just basically waiting to get played again that still are going to outclass Quirky. Um, so I, I, I don't suspect that we will be seeing him. I think that Ezreal has basically become the fourth best AD carry. He's going to be better than Quirky. Um, and I think that even uh, Kalista is probably going to be better than Quirky. Uh, if, if we're talking about the uh, international level of players uh, that are capable of playing her, I think that she's going to be better than Corky. So uh, Ezreal and Kalista still hanging out at the very bottom, uh, below Jin, Sivir, and Ash. Um, so there is that. I mean, maybe even Caitlyn is actually above Corky uh, and Kalista as well. So there is that. Diana, e pull distance increased. Now this is nice, but if she doesn't get some help from items and uh, or AP ratios or something, uh, I don't think that it's enough to put her back into the meta. There's too many mid lane matchups right now where she's not going to have a very nice time uh, relative to like what the jungler meta is as well. Uh, and when we're talking about like a competitive from a competitive standpoint, it's just not good enough to propel her back into the meta. Is it okay for solo queue? Yeah, but then again, any champions okay for a solo queue. Um, but I think that the uh, the maximum pull distance being 75 is quite big. Um, but I, I don't see it coming back into the meta unless as a super counter pick. And if literally the stars align, no pun intended, even though, you know, moons, whatever. Uh, but yeah, okay. Uh, Draven, R cooldown and costs reduced. Whirling death, 120 mana to 100 mana. Cooldown 110 to 90 scaling to 120 to 80 scaling. Um, so it's, I mean, it's it's up at a uh, tier one, but that doesn't really matter. Um, the mana cost, I think, it's also negligible. I, I, I don't see the point for the uh, the changes. Uh, they might just think that you know, hey, we, I mean, we did away with Tyler one, so I mean, the world is safe. You know, and now there's no good Draven players, you know what I'm saying? Um, and we need to give them some, you know, S pluses. They they come with these Draven buffs, you know, because the, the real Draven god is now off the rift. So we have that going. All right, Evelyn, our cooldown decreased. Uh, Agony's Embrace, 150 to 90 scaling uh, to 120 to 80 scaling. That is disgusting. Um, so in the last two weeks or so, I've actually spoken with uh, some coaches, some players, some, you know, people involved in the scene, cast or whatever. Uh, and I, I predicted that because of the current belief that lane swaps do not exist amongst pro teams, Evelyn would potentially come back for Worlds unless people could actually figure out how to pull off the lane swaps and really learn how compositions truly function um, at this level of play. If they don't do that, then I think Evelyn makes her way back into the meta because she has some current good matchups, and there's also some uh, mid lane and top laners that are 
kind of vulnerable to her. Um, so I think that this kind of a buff is really interesting because that might mean that we will be seeing her for worlds. Ezreal, passive attack speed increased. Primarily, okay, so passive rising spell force, 10% at all levels to 10, 12, 14% at levels 1, 7, 13. Uh, maximum attack speed, 50% at all levels to 50, 60, 70. This is really good. As I just mentioned, Ezreal is probably the fourth best AD carry right now. Um, and so while he is sitting down there, uh, some of the changes that we just saw happen to Ash, and we don't know what exactly is on the plate, maybe Jin. Uh, okay, Jin is... Get Ezreal might be uh, might be in the top three after this. Uh, we're gonna have to find out when we read about the Jin changes. But huge buff for him as well. Any anything that can help him helps him a lot because he's already basically just on the edge of uh, being in the big three for AD carry. Gangplank base health down, W cost up, R cooldown increased, and damage decreased. Well, fuck me up, fam. All right, base health 580 to 540. That's really big. That basically means that you need to auto attack him. Uh, 1 to 1.5 times less uh, in terms of early game trading. That is very, very big. W, remove scurvy. Uh, 60 to 100 mana scaling to 80 to 101, uh, 120 mana scaling. That's really painful too. Um, then again, he doesn't really have such bad mana problems, and I don't think that it's impossible for him to fix this actually just with runes um, or masteries, depending on what uh, tree he's running. Um, I think he can definitely get around the move, uh, remove scurvy. Uh, problems, Powdered Keg. Picks a bug with a physical damage dealt to barrel when detonating. It was procking some life steal spell vamp, okay? Uh, our Cannon Barrage. 160 seconds to 140 to 180 to 140. Damage, uh, 600 to full. Wow, that's really big. Um, generally, the early game Gangplank, uh, the early game, uh, Gangplank Cannon Barrage doesn't really do too much. Um, the mid-game Cannon Barrage does do stuff. The only time that the first Cannon Barrage does anything is generally if you're contesting dragons early on, uh, between levels 8 and 10, uh, where this kind of a nerf is pretty fucking huge. Um, however, the late game damage only being affected by 60, that's negligible. Um, Gangplank right now, these changes are nice. I don't think it's going to take him out of the meta by any means. As I said, I think that professional players uh, will find ways to you know, work around these nerfs, uh, either with mono regeneration runes or mastery mix-ups uh, or, you know, whatever, uh, and he's going to basically be the same gangplank that we all uh, know and love. He's the only champion in the game right now that your team can be down 10k plus gold and he can keep you in it. He is the hardest carry that currently exists in the game at the professional level, and I don't think that's going anywhere, um, and that's partly due to his cannon barrage and his barrels. Um, his laning phase, I mean, we've seen Gangplanks go 0-4, 0-5 in laning uh, in professional matches, especially in Korea, and it just doesn't matter. They reach that endgame stage, and there's no stopping him. So, okay, Gragas, E cooldown up. R now has a fixed travel time. E body slam, 12 seconds to 16, 15, 14, 13, 12 seconds. That's really, really problematic. Um, that actually might just kill him. Uh, our explosive cast, a uh, travel time 0 to 0 0.58 seconds based on distance to 0 0.55 seconds regardless. So a max range cask, that's really bad. I think Gragas might be gone. Gragas might be out of the meta. That might be it for him. That might be all she wrote. The fat lady sings no more. Today you learned Gragas is a girl. All right, so Jace, E cost up, our AP, AP ratio is replaced with AD ratio. Uh, empowered attack is 0.4 ability power to 0.4 bonus attack damage. That's really big. Uh. What? Who made these changes? That's disgusting. Oh my god. Jace is so buffed. Oh my god. Well, he's coming back to top lane, he's coming back to mid lane. Fuck, maybe if Def's feeling frisky again, you know, he might come back to uh, he might come back to AD carry, who knows? That's really big. Alright, Jace is back. Uh Jin, W's AD ratio down, R no longer refunds cooldown for unused shots, R's execute damage up, base damage down. Okay, well the the thing on the R doesn't really matter. Um oh wait. Uh, okay. Enemies now have- okay. Current call no longer refunds 10% cooldown. Alright, so that's useless. Um, missing health damage. 2% for every 1% missing, 2.5% for every 
one percent. Like that's a wait. Is that a buff? Minimum damage per shot, 50, 125, 200 plus 0.25 bonus attack damage to... Okay, so that's nerfed. So the missing health is up. Maximum damage per shot is also... Da it probably ends up dealing the same damage. To be completely honest, it pro I, I mean, I, I'm not going to do the math in my head. I'm pretty sure it almost deals the same damage. Um, it's just that versus squishier targets, they're going to have uh, a higher chance to survive. So, that's okay. W, Deadly Flourish. Uh, 0.7 bonus attack damage, 0.5. That's negligible, um, because generally the W doesn't actually... Uh... Oh, wait! Deadly Flourish. This isn't his his snare. Oh, wait. Is it his snare? No, wait. Deadly... No, this is... This is... Okay, this is not... Wait. Hell. Uh... E is the... Yeah, okay. Alright, yeah, okay. Oh, this is actually a little bad. Oh, that's actually... Ooh. Oh, that's... Ooh. Ooh. But it's better for CS. Ooh. It's a little funky. Jin's still gonna stay, though, because his kit's too nice. Uh, Jinx. R ratio increase. Super Mega Death Rocket. 0.15 bonus attack damage. Okay, uh, maximum ratio. Oh, so I was talking about how Jinx uh, earlier was, you know, she's on the, well, no, I, I didn't mention her. She was just below the other 80 carries that I mentioned, or did I mention her? Um, but nonetheless, she was, she would be below the other 80 carries um, by a little bit, but this definitely also might make her come back into the meta. So that, that's a nice little buff. Kennen, uh, smoother Kennen basic attacks, basic attack missile speed, 1600, 1700. That's pretty big. Electrical surge. Uh, empowered attack missile speed, 1800 to 1700. Okay. Uh, cannon's not coming back into the meta, so that doesn't really matter. Malphite, brutal strikes, cooldown, 14 to 12 seconds. Bonus armor, 10, 15, 20, to, or 10 to 30% scaling, 15 to 35% scaling. Active damage ratio, 0 0.1, bonus armor, 0. Point... That's really big. And you know, the other reason that this is so big right now is also because of the Jace change that we just saw. So the fact that there was the Jace change, and then there's on top of that, the possibility for Jinx and Ezreal to come back in, Malphite, that's looking pretty good. It's actually looking really good. Also the change to Ash, that's definitely going to help. So a lot of things playing into the Malphite buff that does not necessarily just have to do with Malphite. I think that's actually really, really, really nice. Morgana, E cast range increased. That's nice. I don't think that it'll make her viable unless Leona comes in, though. Um, she could, well, she could be viable as a very, very niche pick, but there's a lot of other supports right now that are just inherently better. But definitely, any buff is a buff. Oriana, R cost and cooldown decreased. Okay, so the cost is 100 at all ranks now. That's pretty big. Uh, cooldown 120 to 90 seconds, uh, now 110 to 80 seconds. So you factor in CDR, and honestly, it's not really that different. So Oriana is still going to be in the uh, the same awful spot that she has basically been in for a little while now, which is really sad because she used to be the queen of mid lane. Um, but then so many more champions just came out that just do so much. So yeah, Poppy is movement speed up. W resistance is increased. Movement speed 340 to 345. That's really big. W steadfast presence 12% bonus armor and magic resistance 15% bonus armor and magic resistance. That's really gross. So with the 5% uh, from the defense tree, she gets 20 bonus armor and magic resistance. That is disgusting. That is so disgusting. I mean, the 3% increase, I mean, that that's not so big, but it is. But I mean, there, there's more stuff that ties into this. Might be seeing Poppy again as well. And I mean, talking about Poppy coming back, I, again, it plays into Malphite. So that's really nice. Rek'Sai. Uh, E and R cooldowns increased. Okay, ooh. Ooh. So the tunnel, the tunnel is definitely just gonna hurt the tunnel network. I don't think that it's gonna really hurt Rek'Sai that much during teamfights, so that's gonna be fine. Uh, avoid rushes are going up. This is generally a utility spell, um, so you're just gonna have to be using it. Uh, you can't use it as, uh, as liberally as you, as you did before. Um... So that, I mean, that's fine. This is, this is an example, again, of a fair balance change. Riven, R damage up. R, Blade of the Exile, 80 to 160 scaling to 100 to 2. Why? Windslash maximum damage, 240 to 480 scaling to 300 to 6. 
Why? Why would you do that? No. This is a champion that almost can't really be balanced. Um, because if the numbers are too good, then she's too good, and her kit is way too good. Um, it's basically the Kossadin of AD top lane, um, where it's just impossible to balance. This may or may not propel her back in. She has a lot of other problems. Um, fortunately, though, Jace, I believe, has his way with her, so that's really good. And then Malphite is going to fuck her up, fam. So, you know, I mean, Smeb's happy. Um, Rise, our cast range up at rank 1. Uh, 1,500, 3,000 to 1,750, 3,000. Okay, that's not so big. Uh, okay, Sivir, WAD ratio decreased. Our passive attack speed decreased. That's pretty bad. Um, the attack speed on our, on the hunt, that's not, you know, so problematic, especially for a lot of team comps. It could be problematic, depending on some, uh, world's comps, uh, but again, there is patch 6.16, or 6.18 that still needs to come out, so we don't know how that's gonna go. Thresh, our cooldown decreased. Like a few others on the list, Thresh has less access to his ultimate than we'd like. Uh, 150 to 130 uh, is now 140 to 100 seconds. That's actually really good. That's definitely going to impact his later game uh, team fighting abilities. But it's not the problem that he has currently um, in terms of you know his access to the meta. I think that there's a lot of other factors that uh, are you know in play right now. However, again, come set patch 6.18, a lot of stuff might change, and Thresh might come back because he is the prince of supports and he has a very very loaded kit. Um, he just, he's not in a very good spot in the meta right now. Okay. E, Pillar of Ice. 23 to 11 second scaling to 22 to 14 second scaling. Now, this is just what I call a fair uh, balance change. I don't think this is really going to be so bad, especially because you don't really put points in Pillar of Ice early on. Um, so it's basically the same early on. It's just less obnoxious at the later stages. Vein. Q scaling increased at later ranks, ratio 0 0.3 to 0 0.5, total attack damage to 0 0.3 to 0 0.7. They can try as they might uh, to make Vayne uh, more viable, but honestly, this this isn't going to do it. It's just not going to do it. She, she suffers from just basically having a bad kit, and unless all of the items are basically trash in the bottom lane and other AD carries are really trash, uh, and the top laners are very, very basic uh, in the sense that, like, they don't really have overloaded kits, and they don't have a lot of utility, uh, she can't really come back. Um, Vigar, passive grants more ability power on killer assist. So 3 to 5 on killer assist, event horizon, bug fix, that's nice. Vi, passive and Q cooldowns decreased at early levels. Okay, so cooldown eight to eight sec or 18 to 8 seconds at levels 1 through 18, to 16 to 8 seconds at levels 1 to 18. So that's really nice early on, Q uh, vault breaker. 8 to 18 to 8 second scaling to 16 to 8 second scaling. That's really, really big, actually, early on, especially uh, if you run flat AP. Uh, knockback duration, 0 0.5 to 0 0.75 seconds to 0 0.7 seconds. That's really, that's quite big. That is, okay, well, <laughs> that's pretty big. All right, so Vi buffs, uh, Excessive Force, uh, upon first level up, Vi immediately gains two charges of Excessive Force. That's really big, too. Um, so with Gragas being removed and a lot of these Vi buffs, uh, the problem is, though, is that Vi, she might come back in, but Vi is reliant on other champions existing in the meta. She is not a proactive champion or a versus all. Uh, per se, um, unless, you know, these changes are stronger than I think that they are, which they might be, um, but I'm not too privy to her, her clear speeds um, and how effective she is uh, immediately after first clear and stuff. Um, the other problem with Vi, though, is she's not low economy. Um, even though her kit would suggest that she is okay low economy, well, She's, she's low economy early on, but then mid-game, she doesn't have the ability to be as low economy as some of the other junglers. Um, however, uh, I think that she is in a little bit better of a spot than Evelyn, but Evelyn comes with the passive that forces the enemy team to invest more gold into more resources. Um, so Evelyn basically has a vampirism on a opponent's gold that Vi does not have, and so you have to factor that in when comparing the two. Uh, but overall, I think that's fine. Splash updates, uh, Scion, no one cares about him. Uh, turret AI, uh, turrets target champions more consistently, okay. Bug fixes, I'm not going to read these because I've always missed some in the past, so I don't want to do that. Arcade skins, these are the most baller things in the world. 
I just want to point out that Arcade Ezreal basically looks like an arcade version of a Cloud Strife from Final Fantasy VII uh, when you're in the game room thing, so just wanted to point that out. And that is it for the patch 6.17 rundown. Oh, there's all the... Uh, oh! Oh! <gasps> One for all Teemo mode Easter egg hunt with pink wards. <laughs> all right. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. Later.